Hey everyone, good evening. Welcome to the class. Well, today's session is going to be interesting because we have already learnt about the co coordinate geometry in the previous session, right? So what are we going to discuss today? Today, we are going to be talking about the complete NCRT questions. Like whatever questions we have in the NCRT, all the questions we will be discussing in this one session. Yes, well, I'm sure that before coming for the class, all of you have actually revised that chapter, right? All of you have actually watched the previous video that we did. Okay, so who all we have here? Hi, Monica. Hi, Shiva. Hey, Tatleen. Hey, Varsha. So how many of you have actually watched the previous video that we did on coordinate geometry? And how many of you have actually done, are you act, are actually done with this chapter? Hi, Sumit. Samyukta. Okay. It is actually difficult for me to remember the names because you are using different names and your actual names are different. And that too, a lot many students are doing this. Hi, Venkat. Hi, Bhuvnesh. Prachi. Hi. Varsha. Still, Samyukta is going to help you as well. Because the basic concepts, I would say, are same. Yes, you have done that. Great. Students are saying that they've actually revised it. That's nice. Hi, Ram. Good evening. All right, all right. So, let's get started. So, before I properly start the session, let me give you an important update. I think this is something that we've already seen before. So what is the change that Baiju's mini learning program is now free, but it is a limited period offer. So to avail the offer, you can have to use the code YT free and all are in caps over here. But just remember one thing that since it's a limited period offer, do use this code so that you can get three sessions free that means absolutely free of cost. And the best thing is you can you can take a class at whatever time is convenient for you and whatever subject you want to take the class for. Yes, two teacher advantages there, one-on-one -on -one guidance from the personal mentor, live interactive classes, and yes, after class assignments and assessments would also be shared. Yes, Bhuvanesh is saying completed this chapter. Wow, that's nice. Yes, Sumit, you're right. It is the easiest chapter in the entire grade ninth. That's nice, Samyukta. Bhuvnesh, hi Aditi. No, Monica, we won't have many today, but yes, all the NCRT questions we are discussing. Happy birthday, Himani. I hope you have a great year ahead. Good evening, Dipanshu. Hey, Nitin. Hi, Navya. All right, all right. So are we all ready? Yes. All right, so I hope everybody has joined the Telegram channel. So many benefits we are getting here. Session updates would be shared. And yes, whatever sessions we are doing here, you get the session PDFs over there. Quizzes, homework questions, some interesting revision questions as well. Hi, Shafi. Ramesh, Tube, Navya, Sh I Ashwamitha. I can see a lot many students are joining now. Samyukta, this should not happen. Please try it again. So the link for the Telegram channel as well as, as I said, for the app, the Baidu's app, it is there in the description after this session. Please do go check that out. Yes, we all are ready. Shall we start with the questions? Yes, quickly. I need a thumbs up and smiley. Come on, it's a live session. We can only make it engaging if, if you are there. Yes. Yes, quickly. All right, all right. I can see lots of thumbs up and smileys here. Nitin, try it one more time. All right, all right. So let's get started. Here's our first question. How will you describe the position of a table lamp on your study table to another person? So when we are talking about this has to be done with respect to another person, right? So first, considering that table lamp is in the intersection of both the x-axis and y-axis. I'm sure that all of you are aware of the x-axis and y-axis. Table lamp is here. It's at their intersection, right? So since it's at the inter intersection, we can mark the origin. Now we need to tell that how we are going to describe the position. So now it depends what the length and the breadth of the table lamp is, right? So let's suppose the length is 25 centimeter breadth over here. Now the distance you can see over here, right? Let's suppose this distance is 25 centimeter, this is 15 centimeter. So how can we tell? How can we tell? Because we, have, we are measuring the distances of this length and breadth from the origin. So what the answer is going to be? Because we have to tell that in terms of coordinates, right? 
Correct, Bhuvanesh. Yes. In terms of coordinates. So what that is going to be. Quickly, I want answer. Yes, correct, Navya. That's going to be 15, 25. That would be the position for the table lamp. Right. Absolutely. No, no, no. We are not considering the third axis. As per your syllabus, we are only talking about the two axes. X and Y axis. Yes. Thank you, Chinmay. 15, 25. So everybody has understood this. All right, all right. Let's move ahead to the next one. So this is a pretty long question, right? But we will read it carefully. Street plan. A city has two main roads which cross each other at the center of the city. So let's suppose this is a city and the two main roads are crossing at the center. These two roads are along the north-south direction and east-west. So north-south is like this. East-west over here is like this, right? Now, all the other streets of the city run parallel to these roads. Since they are running parallel, so they should be like this or they should be like this. They are running parallel, right, to these roads. Are 20 meter apart and those roads, each of those roads are 20 meter apart. That these would be the distances. We are just first interpreting the question. So, this is the way to, you know, read out a question, to interpret the question when you come across a big one. As I always say, when you come across a big or a complex question, you don't have to worry. We will read it calmly step by step we will break it down and most of the times what we can do is first jot down the information that you get from there make the figure accordingly if it is possible in that question yes so there are five streets in each direction like this also and like this also in every direction and where one centimeter is equals to 200 meters draw a model of the city on your notebook and represent roads and streets by single lines those who have already done it that's very nice but those who are learning it for the first time i would request you to please be ready with your notebooks and pens and try solving along with me. Trust me, in just in this 30 to 40, 45 minutes, you will be able to practice this entire chapter. Right? Then you won't have to try this again. You won't have to sit, sit down and again practice it. So let's utilize this time, right? While taking classes, we can understand this. Chinmay, I'm reading it out. Don't worry. Please, take your notebooks and pens. Not only one street, no. This is the north-south direction, this is east-west. Question says that it has all the other streets because, see, it's a very big question. So let's go step by step. All the other streets of the city run parallel to these roads. And there are five streets in each direction. That means vertically as well and horizontally as well. Right? So vertically, five streets. Right? Like this. Vertically, we will make five streets. Right? And horizontally also, we will make five streets like this. This way. Right? And all these streets are 20 meters apart. There is a distance of 20, 20 meters. Right now, don't use a graph book, Sumut, I would say, because that will take time. You can just use your normal notebook. Right? Okay. So, there are many cross streets in the model. A particular cross street. What is a cross street over here? Question already mentioned it. That... A city has two main roads. These were the main roads. One is in the north-south direction, other one in the east-west direction, right? All the other streets which are running parallel to them, right? Uh, I hope this is clear. Thank you, Pratima. Thank you, Mukesh. I hope everybody is solving along with me. Yes, Chinmay, don't worry. Once I move to the next slide, you will be able to you will be able to understand that better because figure is there. Now each cross street is referred to as the following manner. Each cross street, okay. If the second street is running in the north south direction and fifth in the east west direction, they meet at some crossing. Then when we will we will this call call cross street two comma five. Using this conversation, we have to answer these two questions. Right? How many cross streets can be referred to as four comma three? How many cross streets can be referred to as three comma four? Now let's understand this. Question says, first we have to draw the street plan. How is the, in the, so the main two roads of the city, one is in the north-south direction, another one in the east-west direction, right? That's what question said. I'm sure that question is in front of you. You can open your NCRT books along with me so that you can read the question step by step. Hey, Varsha. Yes. Chinme, I hope now you'll be able to understand this better. Open your NCRT books. Yes. Keep your notebooks and pens ready already done it that's amazing so you can practice along with me yes all right so these are the two main roads north about north south east west okay now it says 
in both in both the directions right there are st there are other streets which are running parallel to them both directions like vertically as well street 1 street 2 street 5 and horizontally also street 1 street 2 street 3 street 4 street 5 right open that's great now are you able to understand how we have drawn the uh, we have drawn the streets five streets are running parallel to these roads in both the directions chinme Navya, Alku, Pratima, Aditi, I hope this is clear. Yes, quickly give me thumbs up smiley so that I can move ahead. Hey Shafa, yes, Alku is saying yes, this is clear. Prachi, I can see thumbs up now, yes. Venkat Raman, Alku, Monalisha, first exercise of your NCRT. Others can help you out with the exact number. Kushagra. Okay, okay. I'm not moving ahead quickly. Open your books. So, whenever we have a practice session, like when we are discussing the NCRT question, so let's say I'm discussing NCRT exemplar. So, remember one thing. Be ready with your NCRT books, with your notebooks for every math session. Be ready with your notebooks and pens so that we can practice it. That's the right way to learn it actually. Because this is the subject that will come with the practice only. And when you are solving, when you are learning any concept, jotting, jotting down important points or solving along with me, trust me, you will be able to understand it better rather than just watching it. Yes? I'm sure that whomsoever has actually tried it, they would actually be able to relate to me. They would actually be able to understand this, what I'm saying. Yes, Sumit. That means your normal math textbook that you use. Yes. Are we all ready? Yes? Shall I move ahead? Right now, Pratima, it is not required because I'm discussing the NCRT questions. Okay. All right. So, five streets we can see running parallel to these main two road, city roads. Question already mentioned. You can read in the book that one centimeter is equals to 200 meters. Right? Okay. Cool. Now, coming to the first question. You tell me, how many cross streets can be referred to as 4,3? We all know what 4, 3 means. 4 means this is my abscissa. 3 means this is my ordinate. 4 means that's my x coordinate. That's my x coordinate, right? You would be un able to understand what x coordinate from here is. 3 would be my y coordinate for here. Y coordinate, right? That means ordinate. Can anybody tell me how many cross streets can be referred to as 4, 3? Yes. Quickly, answers. Now the figure is right in front of you. This is easy. When we are saying 4, 3, look at this. Street number 4. Yes, this is the first question. Others, yes, please help them out with the exact question number. This is the first question. I'm sorry, this is the second question, first part. Oh, it's already written here, second question. Yes. Second question, first part, right? Okay, so it says, how many cross streets can be referred to as 4, 3? When I'm saying 4, 3, where is 4? This is the street number 4. This is street number 3. That's how we write down the coordinate. Okay, let's mark the coordinate. It's going to be here. Right? 4, 3. How many cross streets? We can only see one. There's only unique cross street which could be referred to as 4, 3. Only one. Right? Are we able to understand the question? See, no mugging up. Try understanding things. Because it is, maybe it is possible that you might not get the same question in the paper. But yes, but you might get some case study like this. And then we, when we come across a new question, that too, such a big one, we already feel that, okay, I won't be able to do it. This, is, this looks like a very complex one. Does that happen with you also? Hi, Tosef. Yes. Yes, Chinmay, 4, 3. This is street number 4. So, four, this is the X coordinate and this is street number 3. This is the other coordinate. Only one cross street is possible here, right? Right, Sumit. I know that you gave the answer. Moving to the next question, I mean next part of this question. Why not two? Because now we are only one cross street is possible. That could be written as 4, 3. Is there any other possibility to show 4, 3? Yes, coordinates are unique. Right. Only one could be seen here. Yes, Navya, I hope your doubt is clear. Okay, let's move ahead to the next part. How many cross streets can be referred to as 3, 4? This is street number 3. Okay, and this is street number 4. Street number 3, street number 4. Where are they going to meet? They are going to meet at this point. That's basically what? 
this point is and we know that one centimeter over here, I'm sorry, is over here 200 meters. So that's 3 comma 4. Only one, right? So only one over here is possible. That could be referred to as right. I can see a lot many of you are answering one. Yes, that's the answer. So we all are clear with this and we have understood how to, you know, how to interpret a big question, a complex one. First, we will jot down all the things. We will try making a figure if, if it is possible with the question. Right, and then you think of all the concepts that you have learned in the chapter, like what I can apply here. Just by using the basic knowledge that you have learned in coordinate, I mean in graphs in grade 7 and grade 8, using that we will be able, we are able to answer this. See, nothing new in it. Right? Alright, let's move ahead to the next question. Write the answers for each of the following questions. First is what is the name of the horizontal and vertical lines drawn to determine the position of any point in the Cartesian plane? What is the name of the horizontal and the vertical lines? Horizontal and the vertical line that we use to determine the location of any point. So these horizontal and vertical lines, what are these called? Horizontal one is called the x-axis. Vertical one is called the y-axis. Right? Simple one. Monica, please refresh the screen. It's, I think it's working fine for others. You might have some network issues. This is clear. Okay. Let's move ahead to the next question. What is the name of each part of the plane formed by these two lines? So these two lines, this x-axis, this y-axis, what is the name of each part? They are making these four parts. One, two, three, four. What is the name of each part? This is quadrant one. This is quadrant two. This is quadrant three. And this is quadrant four. Name of each part is the quadrants. Yes. Correct. Ah, I can see that understanding part is good. You all know this. Okay. Let's move ahead to the next part. Write the name of the point where these two lines intersect. Oh, that's very simple. We know that these two axes, these two lines intersect at here, which is basically called the origin. What are its coordinates? 0, 0. Right? Yes, Satish, Chinme, Pratima, Sumit, Shiva, all rounder. Venkat, absolutely. Monica, what's... So we all have understood this. Great. Yes, Chinmay, 0, 0. Now that we, we have solved these basic questions, let's move ahead to the next one. Here we will come across a lot many parts in this one question. See the figure and write the following. The coordinates of B. Where is B? B is here. What are the coordinates of B? Sorry, Samyukta. I told you it will be difficult for me to remember this. Okay. So this B we can see here. If you see from the y-axis, here it is 2. And look here, right? Here it is 2 and from the x-axis it's here. What are the coordinates? Yes, you all are correct. That's minus 5 comma 2. These are the coordinates for this B. Yes, absolutely. Let's move ahead to the next one. What are the coordinates of C? Quickly. C. We can see here. Look at these lines. What is the x-coordinate? Yes, x-coordinate over here is 5 and y-coordinate is minus 5. Navya, it's going to be 5 comma minus 5, not minus 5 comma 5. I'm sure you wrote that by mistake. Mona Lisha, all the exercises that you have in NCRT. That's why I'm saying you can practice along with me so that you don't have to pick up the, you know, pick up the book again, going through the chapter. No need of that. Just practice with me. If you're writing along with me, solving along with me, I'm sure that by the end of this, this session, you will be thorough with this chapter. Right? Okay, you all are right. Yes, Samyukta, Sumit, Prachi. Yes. Okay, let's move to the next one. The point identified by the coordinates minus 3, comma, minus 5. Where is minus 3, comma, 5? Minus 3, comma, minus 5. Minus 3 is here and here we have minus 5. So what is the point identified? We have to name that point quickly. Yes, correct, Prachi. That's going to be E. Sumit, Satish, how come you are saying H? That's going to be point E. Yes, absolutely. Samyukta, Monica, Lavanya. Yes, that's E. Let's move ahead to the next one. Right, Aditi, Dipanshu. The point identified by the coordinates 2, comma, minus 4. When I'm saying 2, comma, minus 4, quickly I need answers. You all have your NCRD books with you. Right? I'm explaining you, so you should be more, you should be more faster than me. Yes, Samyukta, is it so? You can ask your friends also to join this. I'm sure that it would be helpful for them. Because as you can see over here, this is a very simple chapter, right? Just the basic concepts that you learned in grade 8, that's what we are using here. Nothing new. 
It's just that we need to know how to apply those questions, right? I mean, how to apply that knowledge to the questions. You have asked them, that's great. You can share the link with them of the video. They have joined. I hope they're also liking it. Chinmay Prachi. Okay, everybody's saying, I'm sorry. I did not, I didn't realize that you all are giving the answers. Yes, you're right. That's going to be G. That's great, Samyukta. So, so other students can also do it. You can also share the link of the video with your friends so that they can also join it. Yes, it's a free class, right? So anybody can take advantage of this. Okay, let's move to the next point. The abscissa of the point D. Quickly, what is the abscissa of point D? We all know what abscissa is. Abscissa means the X coordinate. Ordinate means the Y coordinates. Yes, Jivita. Easiest chapter. Correct. Trust me, I remember when I was in grade 9th or you say grade 10th also, coordinate geometry was one such chapter that you don't revise. I mean, generally you pick up the difficult ones first and then you leave the simpler ones till the end because obviously difficult ones are the ones because the toughest ones uh, that, that they need more time of practice, right? So I, I used to pick these chapters up at the very end once I'm done with everything. 6 comma 2, 6 comma 2, 6 comma 2. Yes, you are correct. Its coordinates are going to be 6 comma 2. See, this is 6, this is 2 here. Correct, Shiva. I'm sorry, Samyukta. So it's, it's used at a lot many places. Yes. Okay, moving to the next one. Ordinate of the point H. Where is point H? This is the point H. What is its ordinate? If you see here, let's mark these lines. What is the ordinate? If you see the entire coordinate over here, that's going to be minus 5 comma minus 3, right? So what is the ordinate? If this is the coordinate, ordinate is this part. Question is asking about this. What the answer is going to be? Right, that's going to be minus 3, right? Similarly, in the previous one, it's 6 comma 2, abscissa is going to be 6 only. I'm just telling you so that you don't have any confusion because I told you about the entire coordinate. Moving to the next one, the coordinate of point L. Where is L? L is here. Yes, quickly. It's lying on the y-axis. Now here many students make a mistake. It's lying on the y-axis. So entire coordinate of this is going to be, since it is lying on the y-axis, x-coordinate would be 0. So that's 0, 5 over here. Yes. Somebody had a question. Not only 0, we will say 0, 5. Yes. I hope this is clear. No doubt still here quickly. Sadhana, Monica, Bhavishka, Dipanshu, Aditi. Infinity, yes, you are late, but it's okay. You, I would say you have missed half of the session, but whatever you have missed, recorded session would be there on YouTube. You can watch that later, right? This is the advantage that we get on YouTube, isn't it? No doubt, thumbs up I can see over here. How to mark 0, 5? Okay, that's simple. If you have to mark 0, 5, so this is here. This is the x-coordinate, right? And this is the y-coordinate, right? So that means x coordinate is 0. It means that it will lie on the y axis. x coordinate 0, y coordinate is 5. That's how we are marking it, Chinmay. I hope this is clear. Yes, lot many thumbs ups. And I can see the comments, no doubt. Okay, great. Let's move ahead to the next one. Coordinate of the point M. This is point M here. You can see that. Now look at this. If point M is here, this is at this point, minus 3, right? Don't get confused here. Now, if x coordinate is minus 3, it is lying on the x axis. So, y coordinate is going to be 0. So, its coordinate would be minus 3, 0, right? Any doubt still here? Somebody wrote minus 3, 0. Sumit, Bhavishka, Monalisha. Uh, many students are saying it's min uh, 0, minus 3. Min it is minus 3, 0. I could see the opposite also. It was moving for Sorry, if I missed out something. I hope that everybody has no, no one has confusion in this. It's minus three comma zero. Yes, Abhinav, that's good. 22, 22 on twenty five is actually pretty good. And I'm sure that by doing some more practice, you would be able to score better or maybe full in maths. Yes. So just be regular to the classes, and for maths class especially, be ready with your notebooks and pens whenever you are come for the class, and try solving with me. In just 30 to 40 minutes class, you will be able to, you know, I'm sure that you will be able to understand the chapter better and thorough with it. Then after that, you don't have to pick up the book again, again, going through the questions. No need to waste time on that again. You can this way save your time as well. Thank you, fun and creativity time. 
doing good Mon Monisha. So we have Monalisha and Monisha here. Yes. Okay, I hope this is clear. Let's move ahead to the next question. In which quadrant or on which axis? Please read the question carefully. In which quadrant or on which axis? Do each of these points are lying? Verify your answer by locating them on the Cartesian line. All of you ready with your pens? Determine the quadrants where the points lie. Okay, we know that in first quadrant what happens? Both x and y coordinate are positive. Remember these small small things. Second quadrant x coordinate is negative, y is positive. Third quadrant both are negative. Fourth quadrant y is um, x is positive, y is negative, right? This is the basic information, right? Basic concept that we've already learned about. Now let's use this. Here we have to tell in which quadrant or in which axis it will lie. Minus 2 comma 4. What do you think? Where is it going to lie? Minus 2 comma 4. You just tell me the quadrant number. I can see answers here. Monica is saying it's going to be second quadrant. Minus 2 comma 4. Bhavishka, Chinme, Prachi, Abhinav. Abhinav, refresh the screen once. It's working fine for others. Sumit second. Sumit is saying second as well as third. So with first decide which is which is the right coordinate actually a quadrant over here. So minus two comma four. Here you can see x coordinate is negative, but that y coordinate is is positive. So minus two comma four is going to be where it will lie here, right? This is minus two comma four. I'm just drawing this dotted line. There is otherwise there is no use of it. It's not mandatory to draw the dotted line. It's okay, Sumit. Moving to the next one, three comma minus one. X coordinate positive, y is minus one. So 3 comma minus 1 is going to be where? Which quadrant? 3 comma minus 1. Quickly. Fourth quadrant. Right. It's going to be here. Yes. So I'm not drawing the dotted line. It will just get messy. I hope you're able to understand this way. If you have any confusions, please post that in the chat section. Minus 1 comma 0. X coordinate is minus 1. Y is 0. So here comes the important thing. It will not lie in any of the quadrant. It will lie on the axis. Quickly tell me which axis. Monisha. First one to answer. She is saying it's going to be on x-axis. Navya says axis. Yes. Which axis? Everybody is saying x-axis, x-axis. Yes. Because y coordinate is 0. That's good. So minus 1 comma 0 is going to be here. I'm writing here minus 1 comma 0. This is the point, right? On the x-axis, right? Moving to the next one. 1 comma 2. Which quadrant? Quickly. Yes, Navya. Negative x-axis is this side. We generally denote with this x dash. That's the negative of x axis. And this downward part from 0, this is negative y axis, which we denote with y dash. You would see that it is written this way in many books and in NCRD also maybe. Yes, first quadrant, right. 1 comma 2. It's going to be here, 1 comma 2. Right, moving to the next one, minus 3 comma minus 5. A simple question, quickly. Minus 3 comma minus 5. Yes, Navya, we do mention that in exam. Yes. Minus 3, minus 5, third quadrant. Very simple, right? Minus 3, minus 5. Minus 3 is here, minus 5 is here. That's minus 3, minus 5. Simple question. Yes. Correct, Samyukta. Aruna Chalam, Navya, Sumit, Dheeraj, Shiva, Bhavishka. Great. So we all have understood it. Dipanshu, how come it is first quadrant? The last one is going to be in the third quadrant. I hope we have no confusions. Monisha is new here. I hope, Monisha, you are enjoying the class. Yes? Okay, let's move ahead to the next question now. Plot the points x, y in the following table on the plane choosing suitable units of distance on the axis. So all these points are given here, right? We have to plot them. I hope everybody knows how to plot them, right? First, we will mark the x-axis. We mark the y-axis. We have to choose a suitable scale over here. Yes? Okay. All right. So here, let's start with it. First is minus 2, comma 8. How do we mark this? Let's plot them. Minus 2, comma 8. X is minus 2 over here. Let me use a different color. X minus 2 and Y 8. It's going to be, tick, tick, I'm just marking the dots here. It's going to be here. Minus 2, comma 8, right? One scale, you can choose a scale accordingly. That's, accord see, you can choose it as per your convenience, but it just have to be correct. I have taken, you can see that there are big, uh, basically a gap, proper gap I've taken here. So, so that you can see it better. Yes, sir, COVID, you have joined very late. But that's okay, recorded session would be there. Yes, okay. Second quadrant, yes. I hope everybody is plotting along with me. 
Let's utilize this time. Minus 1 comma 7. X is minus 1, Y is 7. Where is it going to be? Minus 1 comma 7, it will be here, right? This point. Let's mark this. Minus 1 comma 7. I'm just removing these green dots. It's kind of get very messy. Yes. Moving to the next one. 0 comma minus 1.25. So x is 0, y is minus 1.25. Definitely it is on the axis this time, right? Yes, it is on y axis. Now we have understood this. I am sure that nobody would make a mistake at this thing. Don't worry up enough. See, whatever ideas you have, if you, if you have any suggestions for us, you want us to do sessions on any of the topics, you feel that, please pose that in the comment section, but after the session. Because here, whatever you are writing, that will go after the session. I won't be able to remember this. So please pose that in the Comment section after this session. Yeah. Yes, Monisha. There will be. Don't worry. Okay. So, minus 1.25. Then we have 1, 3. 1, 3 is where? Which quadrant? Which quadrant? Ah, uh, Bhavishka is saying. 1, 3 Bhavishka says it's in first. It's in first, right? Or in fourth? 1, 2. Because you've written in such a way I'm not able to read it properly. I think you're saying it's first, right? Yes, it's going to be first quadrant, 1 comma 3, both are positive. So 3 comma minus 1, which quadrant? Yes, quickly, 3 comma minus 1. Who said fourth quadrant? Sadhana Devi. She's saying it's going to be in the fourth quadrant. Yes, Monica, Aditi, Monisha, Sadhana, Prachi. Yes, that's in the fourth quadrant. Yes. All right. So basically, I think we are done with all the NCRT questions. We have discussed all the questions that we had in this chapter. So we are completely done with it. Aren't you happy? Yes. Just in this 30, 32 minutes, we have covered the entire chapter. I'm sure that those who were solving with me, they don't have to do it again. All right. So now it's time that I give you a homework question. So you have to locate these points in the Cartesian plane and you can... Let us know the answer, correct answer in the comment section below. So obviously you won't be able to show us the graph, but you can mention in which quadrant they are lying actually. All right, right. And just tell us, were you able to plot this or not? Babishka, yes, very happy. Monica, understood everything. Great. So students who are actually liking this session, please hit the like button. And please, thank you, Navya. Sumit, you won't be able to do that. Image won't be possible, but yes, you can mention the quadrant number. You won't be able to share the image, right? So quadrant number you can mention. Thank you, Monisha, Venkat, Art with me. Thank you, Valrat Singh. So I'm just giving you a reminder. The link for this is given in the description. Don't forget to use the code YTFREE, all in caps. No, Nitin, I think it should work out. We will check that out. Don't worry. Okay, you are Navjot. All right. And it's a limited period offer. And link for Telegram channel also is given in the description. Please do join it. So don't worry, we have got you covered. So many sessions we have for you from every Monday to Friday to make you exam ready. Sumit, please post that in the comment section after this session. Whatever suggestions you have. Thank you, Abhinav. Thank you for such positive words. Please like the session if you feel that it's actually helping you. Share it with your friends in your school groups, in your friends groups. I know that generally students have a lot of friends, right? You have, you have made your friends group on different, different social media platforms so please do share it if you feel because see it's a free live class right and you have the advantage that you can ask your doubts you can get your doubts clarified at that span at that instead of time isn't that great samyukta premium batch wow that's nice so yes for the next class please subscribe the channel so you will keep getting the notifications about the upcoming sessions after this very soon Navjot. All right, so I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.